Yeah, Jackie Chan has a lot of raw ability most don't, but some of the things he's trained to do, many people could learn. Those kind of things, oh, Jackie, good. It's not good. You can do it. Except, do you have the patience or not? I'd argue most anyone with enough determination and dedication can become a great martial artist. So what makes Jackie Chan stand out among the other talented martial artists in Hollywood like Bruce Lee or Donnie Yen? Yes, they are also incredible, but Jackie Chan does something no one else did. He used the ladder to fight people. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, yeah, but that's not what I wanted to say. Outside of his specific style of action comedy, he used his talent to push himself further. Just to get this phone gag right takes so much to go perfectly to make it work. And perfect is what he demanded. The film live forever. No, because you know that they're raining and the actor don't have time. I said, would you go to every theater to tell the audience? No, the audience sit on the theater. Good movie, bad movie, that's all. We've all lamented the use of CGI in recent films. This reminds me of that one scene from the power industry. But CG can be a great tool for talented people. Take Mad Max Fury Road, for example. It's basically a two hour long action sequence with real cars. Real explosions. And also a decent amount of visual effects. In the hands of a great filmmaker like George Miller, David Fincher, or Gore Verbinski, CGI can help to highlight your action. You don't need 30 cars ramming into each other all at the same time. Instead, you can blend a handful of real cars with CG ones, and no one will notice if you shoot and edit it properly, which is an entirely separate video. However, if you use that CG at the forefront of action, it can be disastrous. To see this, we can look at the follow-up to Fury Road. Furiosa is an unfortunate product of this very thing. Maybe it's because it followed up a movie that hit it a lot better, but the CG and green screen work seems to stand out so much more in this movie. Nearly every action sequence has blatantly obvious and unfortunate uses of CG. The locations, cars, people, bikes, storms, and even the blood squibs are CG. Taking that tactile grittiness of the last film and replacing it with a smoothed out polish that stands out like a sore thumb in the wastelands of the Mad Max universe. Some may say that a few uses are unavoidable, like creating this giant citadel. Oh, but wait, we could have just used miniatures. Never mind, remember the 70s? This camera provides a pilot's eye view of an attack on the Death Star. This is all to say CG, while not bad, absolutely hurts the audience's viewing experience if used as a crutch. When we see things we know are fake, we lose investment in it. Humans are very good at naturally identifying when things aren't real, and when we do that, we aren't as interested in it. Practical effects and stunt work go a long way to help the audience believe that something is real. Because, well, it is. Look at the difference between these car chases. Baby Driver allows us to get more invested, more engaged, and more sick and twisted. While this John Wick scene is pretty rough and unengaging. In one, we can feel the action because the actors are feeling it as well. The other, not so much. Oh, that stunt guy took a hard fall, but he was CG, so who cares? Oh, that guy got set on fire, but who cares because the fire's fake. Is it so hard to light someone on fire anymore? Remember the 80s? Dozens of movies and TV shows feature scenes where stunt performers are set on fire. It turns out this is often done with real fire. We deserve to have actors that care enough about us to make sacrifices. We deserve someone like Jackie Chan to slide down this insane pole and smash into a kiosk. We deserve to see these stars doing these time-consuming and slightly risky stunts because we want to see something or someone do something amazing. Something that takes us out of our boring, awful, low-stakes lives. But what are you waiting for? I don't know. Something amazing, I guess. Something that demands more out of these well-paid actors other than saying a line and poking at a blue dummy on a soundstage. If an actor is making that sacrifice, the least we can do is sacrifice our time and a little bit of money to see it. But how do you get people to go? How do you get people interested in the theatrical experience? And how do you generate interest? The answer to all of these is simple. It all comes down to one thing, the audience. 
You could have the best trailer ever with the best cast ever, but if no one watches, no one cares. These hipsters with vinyls in their pockets can't be the only people to watch movies if we want more great things being made. Trailers are great, but they often don't pull audiences like they used to, nor do big names. This is exactly the trap that Fall Guy ran into. There were trailers, ads, and interviews galore, but at the end of the day, what would you market that movie on? Who is it aimed at? Honestly, it's a solid action comedy romance thing, but it's lacking something huge, which you'll see soon. But first, look at all these stunts! They smashed that thing into that other thing. Oh, he just fell off that helicopter. Ah, look at that car jump. This is insane. If they really did all of that, if they really put people in harm's way, why did it fail? Why wasn't the trailer enough? Why did it stumble out of theaters in a single month? And the answer is... knows better than anyone the way to generate great word of mouth is to have something interesting in the film to market outside of the film. In Fall Guy, if Ryan Gosling did any of his stunts, he would want every bit of that stunt on screen. There'd be 12 cameras, close-ups, slow motion, the whole nine yards. Unfortunately, any of the close-ups or slow-mo shots we do get of him are clearly done on a soundstage in front of a giant green screen. Today we're gonna break down how we did, basically how Logan did some of the coolest stunts in our movie, The Fall Guy. The shots that aren't blatantly VFX are wide shots and stunt doubles. When you do this, it ensures the action isn't fun anymore. The second you pull the star out of the scene, you've lost the audience. I know it's hard to wrangle egos, but the movie star needs to star in the movie, especially with the stunts. We need to see them in the cockpit feeling the g-force, or in the car feeling that drift. Imagine if Ryan Gosling actually did this car jump. That would be a marketing machine! There would be article after article about it. BTS on Twitter the next day. The water cooler at work would be strangled to death by the news. That's the difference between guys like Tom Cruise and 99% of the film industry. He knows that if he can feel it, so can the audience. There's five Gs. Oh! Seven Gs. Seeing him fly down the side of a mountain on a dirt bike and then throw himself off of a cliff is exciting. Tom Cruise just rode a motorcycle off a cliff six times today. He's flying in real jets. That's exciting. All right. That was awesome. He's hanging off real buildings, flinging himself off cliffs, jumping out of planes, and doing all other kinds of actually risky and exciting stuff. Humans are nasty little creatures who get exhilarated by simply seeing something risky. It wakes us up and reminds us who we are and that we should probably, you know, be alive.